Hello, everybody. Uh, so many people here. Uh, first, thank you for having me. Uh, it was a long way here, but I hope I can contribute something. And uh, to put this into perspective, um, I'm going to give the, uh, the overview of two more uh, talks that I'm going to dive into really deep uh, later. So I'm just going to try to make the point here to really catch your attention and to really get you interested in, in, in the rest. Because if you've seen uh, maybe on the schedule, and as you will see in, in what we're doing and my background, where we're coming from, uh, you will probably guess you know that we're going what direction, HTML5. I didn't say that. So I'm from the company Uxibo which uh, we founded in 2008, and our real focus is we open the mobile web. And there are only those two things in there that are the key parts that are playing the roles in our company. It's mobile and web. So now you're thinking about web pages on the mobile and all that. I will, I will, I will get you there. I will show you what I mean. So we're... Uh, Based in uh, around Germany, our, one of our co-founders is from Amsterdam. We have well, somebody sitting in Bonn. We have a guy sitting in Augsburg, and I'm from this place down here. Can you guess where it is? Do you know where I'm from? What do you think? Yes, Munich, exactly. Right here. That's where I'm from. And it's a great place for geeks, and I am a geek, definitely. And that's, that's somebody else who said that. I will put that into a different context in the next uh, talk. So at Uxibo, we focus, as I said, we focus strongly around mobile, which is the centerpiece of everything. To be honest, we didn't right from the beginning know that exactly, because we founded the company completely around JavaScript. In 2008, we... Uh, I've been working, I've been working with Tobias, one of the co-founders in a project at BMW as freelancing. And we were using a Django, which is a server-side backend written in Python. And we've been using Dojo, which is a client-side JavaScript toolkit in this project for about two years. And a lot of requests have been coming, coming in and asking us to... Uh, if things could be done, you know, with the AJAX way and Web 2.0 and all that, which you get all on that slide. And uh, we thought, like, well, let's just maybe found a company around this JavaScript. And uh, since we really loved it, and we just really started off and, and did that. And to be honest, we we're surprised with how well that went. So we're not only focusing... Uh, on the language simply because we have to get the satisfaction of the customer done too. So we're also having uh, experience in, not experience, uh, compared to Arabella is not really experience. It's we're working on doing that good user experience because we know in the end there is the front end that is the mobile and we'll get into that in a second, which is offering the user experience. So this has to work. Then technologies like CSS and, of course, the browser. That's uh, exactly what our background is. And in the later talk, I will go much more into, deep, into detail of one of the open source projects, which is uh, TouchScroll. So who of you uh, is using JavaScript extensively? Yes. Cool. That's good. So uh, let's, let's look. Java? Good. Okay. So you just add the script and you're there. Okay. <laughs> so who is there then? Mm, what else? C sharp, .NET, all this. Okay. Good. So I, I, and who is actively doing web development, uh, websites, server, backend, whatever HTML spits out? Okay. So everybody. So you're all with me. That's great. So, but to look into the mobile future, I. Uh, first want to look at what mobile still is. And one of the saddest things is probably slow, right? I'm uh, experiencing it myself 
everywhere that uh, you have the mobile, and I'm very much traveling between uh, Munich and Düsseldorf because we're working uh, for Vodafone, so I'm, I'm always checking the train there. And I have my device with me, and it's tethering. And I use my laptop just to connect through 3G, through the device, to the Internet. And you know, if you do that, you even know that 3G is slow. So, yes, we need a flat rate for that and all that. But that's the next thing. 3G coverage is, I mean, that's a map of Germany. It looks pretty good. The yellow spots are where we have uh, 3G coverage. That's a map of Sweden. I mean, they even have 4G in some uh, places there. I think a lot of places. But there's still a lot of white space there. And now we have the map of the United States. Look how much white space there is. So 3G coverage is, uh, we know that it's something that needs to be caught up on. I mean, we have Wi-Fi and all the other stuff, so we need reception, but we also need solutions in our applications, which allow not to have connections offline. And of course, it's still expensive. Even though I'm, I'm going uh, on the train and it just takes four and a half hours, I have a flat rate, but very often I get this SMS which tells me, uh, yeah, your, your one gigabyte or whatever monthly is just covered, so you being dropped, your speed is dropped to, I don't know, GSM or something. I could pay more to get better flat rate. But uh, I went talking to one of the Vodafone guys, and uh, as um, was said before, I think Andrew said that, the, it's, uh, the, the telecommunication, the operators, they're not going to have flat rate very soon, or they're not really having that prepared. And I said, Actually, I was at the, the opinion to have a flat rate for everybody. And I was telling that to one of the Vodafone guys, and he said, just forget it. Our infrastructure is not ready f within the next years to cover this. And if I think about that, of course. I mean, we're syncing Dropbox onto our devices, and we're watching videos and all that, and it's all moving to mobile space. So, I mean, it's, it's obvious that this infrastructure has to be huge. And that's, that's just where we not are. And what we do, we really have high promises. We expect from the mobile device so much. And I can tell you from experience, because uh, since we are working in a mobile company and we have a lot of mobile phones, we are testing with a lot of them. I can tell you that there are not many that are meeting those expectations that we actually have. Because... Uh, that's actually a picture I, I took when I came here from the, uh, on, the, on the taxi from the airport. I thought it was great. Super luxury bus. I looked at it. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, we're sold so many things, and uh, we get told that this is so good and this can do that. But on mobiles, I think it's especially true that also with apps, you're being uh, sold a lot of times. And then you're disappointed, you just erase it again. So what mobile does to us is actually something very sensitive. It's offering us touch. And if you think about that, touch is not just something like, yeah, that's a new way of technology. It's just going everywhere. First, you have it like you have touch events inside the browser. You have touch events in your application. But what I think is uh, even more important, what it is doing to the user, it's changing your complete behavior with this application. Because you're touching it, and you're expecting instant reaction. Just imagine you wouldn't catch them right away. I mean, that would just be a big fail. You know, instant reaction, that's what we're expecting. We're touching the screen, and we want it to scroll at that moment. We want it to move at that very second. So it's even becoming harder for us, for the developers, to really meet those expectations. And... Uh, I can really say that from experience, the, the attention span is really getting much shorter. What we're uh, right now experiencing, I mean, who has more than 50 applications on his phone? Uh, I guess a lot of people who have this opportunity. Look at the Androids. There are free applications all over. I mean, there's almost everything. There's a lot of iPhone apps, as we heard before, uh, 
Angry Birds is something that really took off like lately. And when I saw that those guys have, I think they had 9 million users in four months or something, which was awesome. <laughs> I really showed it to my kids and they just took away my iPad and they said, yeah, I want that. And uh, also, uh, the next thing is ease of use. And I can tell you that from experience that uh, I gave the iPad, uh, my grandparents, uh, my, my parents-in-law, they're not from Germany, they're from Spain. So we have to get uh, the newspaper so they can like, sit on the couch and read. And I tell, told them, well, it's Sunday and it's closed and we cannot buy the newspaper now. So I give you the iPad and they're not about computers. They're, I think, 75 years old. So computers is something they don't touch. And I said, no, no, it's easy. I just open you the El Pais page, and what you do is you just go up and down with your finger. You click something to have it big, and up there is a back button. You're like, wow, yes, I can use it. And that was, uh, that's really the ease of use which you get with devices nowadays. And then even my, my father-in-law, he said, yeah, give me that. I, I read the El Pais on there. I read the newspaper in there. So he doesn't go to the store in this case. But that's also what those kind of devices are really uh, getting us to. And I mean, that's probably an example. I just found that yesterday. I really liked it because it just so shows the simple, stupid, that stupid use case that you can uh, just realize with that. And now we have to know if that was really correct, but I guess they just took a picture and put that on there. And what mobile actually kicked off is that we not only as developers, but also as users, probably less the developer, but more the user, we're focusing more on uh, a certain thing. This is, for example, an application Instagram, which I, uh, um, well, I just own an iPhone for three or four days now. And a friend, uh, colleague, Tobias, he said, yeah, yeah, Instagram is really cool. He takes a lot of pictures and, and posts them online. And I said, but what is that good for? He said, yeah, I'm just posting the pictures. And what is doing different than TwitPig or Whitefrog and all that applications? It's just uh, adding some filters on there. So you see that's not the actual photo. It's just some filter on top. So it doesn't look like the original. So it actually looks better. And I think it's so, so simple. Uh, what the application in the end, uh, in, end offers copy the URL of the final image into your Twitter stream or into your Twitter application or whatever. So that is a very narrow use case that this application uh, is providing. And I think there are a lot more apps and a lot of apps coming out that are really focused on it. Simply because, what we said before, the attention span that we currently really have is just getting much, much shorter. So we can also be way more user, use case centric. And we had that once with a client. He said, wow, we have this application. It's a, I don't know, it was some printing application where you could print business cards and uh, business paper and all that. And they said, we want the entire website on a mobile. We said, if you want to have 20 drop downs on the first page, I think the application is dead right from the beginning. So go down to the core use case of what is that you really want to bring to your user and offer them just one thing or maybe two things, but they have to reach it within three clicks and you can definitely not offer 20 options at first. So that is uh, something that we also had to learn on mobile, which we also realized and, and then later uh, put into reality with an application which I will show you in a later talk. And definitely there are more apps coming out. I just took the screenshot yesterday, and it's actually just a Google Trends search. But you can see that the number of what the people are talking about, apps, is just rising. Hello? Am I still there? Yes. The number of apps is just, uh, just rising every day. I mean, um, what I heard was it... Uh, yeah, just a while ago, I think the Android number of apps was also, is now above 100,000 or something. So is the App Store actually the new search engine to content? Well, maybe, I don't know. 
uh, I think there are a couple of ways to get content onto the devices. And the solution I will give you in the end and the, the conclusion I will tell you in a second. There's another thing. It's way more devices are coming out. There's, for example, that's just a list of tablets that I found on tablets.com. Just a list of tablets. And if you imagine you want to get to all those tablets and develop for all the tablets, you need a solution there. And they have different uh, technologies on there. They have uh, different uh, base libraries and all that. So we need to get to some place. So I just took a couple of screenshots. We're just talking about tablets, but we're also talking about TVs. And not to mention the mobile phones that we all have. So I think you can see this, this space is endless. We have a lot of apps. We have a lot of devices. We have a, uh, a lot of things to cover to get to the user. And what it is doing, it's not only developing stuff on the mobile, but also swapping back into the, to the uh, browser. And I actually want to show you this example, if I can get the Wi-Fi to work. Oops. I hope I can get Wi-Fi to work. Doesn't look good. Okay. Sorry. Excuse me? Yeah, I, I tried. I tried I, Before the talk, I really tried a lot of times. and just didn't connect. So what this is doing, what this uh, is actually an example for, you can go to, well, the URL is right here. Uh, you can go to the URL and uh, check that out. You know, uh, on iPhone, Android, all the mobile devices we have, motion uh, accelerometer motion sensors and what the Firefox guys did they implemented that in the Firefox and in the Mac you have a motion an accelerometer so I have a Firefox version on there it used to be a nightly build I think now it's uh, in the stable build which has the accelerometer and you can play Mario Kart by taking a laptop and you know moving the laptop right and left you don't need the 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 cursor keys. That's something actually which uh, might be, it's just a side note, but it's really interesting, I think, that now things are swapping back from mobile onto the browser. And things like geolocation and all that, they make most sense on the mobile than in the browser. So what all this means, actually, is that we have a much shorter time to market that we can really get to the market as fast as possible using the app stores. You submit to an Android app store, to the Android market, and your application is online. We need easier technology to do that, and uh, we need standards to do that. And I will get you in a second, and I will show you exactly what, what all those things are. And we need cross-platform. That's actually the conclusion I want to get to. And that will be my next talk will be about uh, it's HTML5, which is going to solve exactly this. So a shorter time to market. I mean, there's no doubt that we know 200,000 Android apps are Androids are activated daily. So even the devices are getting onto the market really quickly. So we have to handle fragmentation. We have to handle different versions and all that. There are 300,000 apps in the iPhone app store. And I don't, I don't think I have to say much more, but uh, that the shorter time to market now in mobile even becomes more and more important. We can see that with uh, customers, that we're developing applications. And uh, since we're using exactly the, te the technologies I said, HTML5 apps, we can offer them a, a preview or even the final version that they, in the end, will get, which will land in the App Store. We can give it to them within days so they can play around with it because they just have to connect through the browser. So how we do that? I will uh, just go into details in, in the next talk. So HTML5 is the engine of the web forever. And if we just saw the entire list of uh, devices I showed before, of just tablets, what they all have in common when you're sitting on the couch and when you're surfing, 
I mean, the surfing already says it. We want to have a browser on there. So all those devices, if it's mobile or tablets or TVs, they all have browsers on there. So HTML is the core thing that gets you to all those devices. And standards and cross-platform, there are actually some um, initiatives that are trying to standardize this stuff. There's, uh, for example, I think the oldest is Bondi, but I'm not sure. Uh, there's Jill, which is the Joint Innovation Lab. It's a corporation of Vodafone, China Mobile, SoftBank, and Verizon. And what they did, they just threw out a specification which allows you to have extended JavaScript APIs in a browser environment, which means not in the browser of your mobile phone or your device, but in an environment which is actually a Chromeless browser, a widget runtime in this case. Now that is merging or that is actually converging into WAC, which is a new uh, consortium that has, I think, 30-something members. So they're really the big players in there. And this uh, specification, they're going to like, sit on top of the Jill and just taking the learnings from Jill. And there's Bondi, which I did not see very much uh, coming around in, in, on the market. But actually what we want is we want a W3C uh, specification for that. And that's exactly the standards I was talking about. And there is a device APIs and policy working group since August last year. And they're standardizing things like uh, the contacts, how to access contacts in, with, with the JavaScript, how to access the address book, the, the, the accelerometer, and all those kind of things that you have at your hands with, uh, native, capable, with na native technologies. So... Unfortunately, that is not in a state yet that is implemented in the market. But what is there in the market are things like the Nokia widget runtime, which is already there forever, I think. And uh, it has a proprietary uh, API that allows you to access all those functionalities. You can access uh, geolocation and all that for a while. And then there's one thing that is what we're extensively using in our in a later talk, uh, show you more in detail uh, how we are doing it. And it is PhoneGap. PhoneGap is, uh, is actually a, a framework which is ported to multiple platforms and allows you to exactly do the same as what the widgets have as their uh, proposition is. Using the widget runtime inside uh, is just HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, which then allows you to access native capabilities. And the PhoneGap guys, they just inject exactly that functionality into your environment. And we have applications out there in the iPhone, Android, and many more stores which are using PhoneGap or uh, a like technology like the widgets. Then there's, uh, there are companies like Accelerator. They have a uh, an environment which allows you the same, but tries to be more native, tries to uh, provide you with more native capabilities, which uh, means that they are rendering, they have, actually you're creating an HTML page, but they're rendering uh, some of the UI components using native technologies. So there, it's a mix actually of uh, the web pure web technologies, and some native stuff. And then there's, uh, I think, an interesting thing, uh, which is Roll Mobile, that is using uh, Ruby on various platforms. So you can write your application entirely in Ruby. Uh, it's a Rails kind of thing. Uh, if you know Rails, you probably get into there really quickly. Um, but they have to have an interpreter running on the machine, so I think it's interesting, and it's showing you the power that current devices have. And those are things that you can really use. Those are in the market. You can push apps into the various stores, and there are actually more. Like, for example, I was at the BlackBerry DEF CON a couple of weeks ago, and 
BlackBerry announced uh, BlackBerry WebWorks for BlackBerry 6, which is uh, an environment. And now they, they put actually HTML5 apps on the same level as native apps. They just say, we provide, it's a phone gap kind of approach. What they're doing is inside they have an HTML, JavaScript, CSS uh, core, and outside around that, they're just putting the Java layer, which provides the access to the native uh, functionality. So all the security and then all that, the, the, that is implemented on the BlackBerry applies to this application too. But you can get much faster to the market because you can really write it and prototype something in HTML, try it in the browser on various devices, and you can, in the end, just wrap it up and throw it into the store. And I think that's a great approach. BlackBerry actually had that since BlackBerry 5, uh, the widgets approach. But now I think they're taking the next step since they're providing a WebKit browser now on BlackBerry 6. I'm really excited about this. And to show you that all this is not theory, but uh, is really in working in reality, we have created an app that we have ported to really, I think, six or seven platforms. It's called Event Ninja. And you can go into various stores and, and download it. And this is, for example, the app running on a, a Nokia. That's on a Windows phone, because Windows 6.5, Windows Mobile 6.5, sorry. I think they provided a widget runtime too. So um, you can get apps on those devices too, but, and, and as I heard uh, last week, Microsoft announced that Servalite and HTML apps are going to be uh, on the same level on their mobile strategy. Now they just have to come up with a nice browser, but uh, they're getting there. Then Palm, and that's actually one of the most interesting things. Palm has a, an entire operating system based around HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Just the web technologies is exactly what their platform is providing. So the entire phone, well, the entire phone, all the applications they're delivering uh, by default, is it an email client or is it uh, the context, the address book and all that? It's all written in HTML, JavaScript, CSS. They have a kind of uh, touch to it that you have certain, it's that you have to have a certain structure inside your HTML, but still, it's HTML. You can prototype really, really quickly. And so for us, it was a no-brainer porting, porting it to, to the Palm. And as you can see, um, it's just a different styling. It's just, we know, it's just CSS that we have to apply. So inside, the business logic can all stay the same. Then we, of course, had it on BlackBerry. That was a BlackBerry 5, I think. Um, it was not so awesome. Of course, on the Android and on the iPhone. So what I want to show here is the reality of web technologies on the phones is, is there. You can use it. And we have all the applications we write for customers, they are all based just on that, on those technologies only. And for the market, what I'm really excited about, I mean, we founded a company. I think it means that more companies can go and just create applications simply because we all know that HTML, JavaScript, CSS is really is, are very simple technologies. So just go for them and, and, and use them, even on the mobile. And you have less risk simply because of what I mentioned before. The use cases on mobile, they are more user-centric, like this Instagram uh, application I showed before. Those guys, they just uh, throw out this application, wrote it maybe in two or three months. You don't need an entire year to get something done but you can have turnaround times on mobiles, which is really exciting. And combined with the technologies that I was uh, just mentioning, HTML, uh, I think you're getting there even faster. You get more solutions, and as I said before, you're getting faster to the market. But I want to give you a look out, not just to what, is, what we are doing and, and what uh, is really in the store, 
but what is potentially possible with uh, those technologies. That is my colleague Nikolai. What he has in his hands here is, is a pulse meter. Uh, he just, uh, actually I wanted to bring it, but unfortunately he has a talk where he needs it. He just puts a pulse meter. He did that at, uh, at Mobile Monday in Amsterdam. And what he then uh, does, there's a little tiny piece of hardware that he's connecting, actually that is wirelessly connecting to this pulse meter and emitting his, frequent, his heart frequency uh, via Bluetooth. So what he then uh, did, he wrote an application for the iPhone using Dojo uh, showing his heart rate. So he added a little piece of code to it that it would tweet the heart rate. And I remember that day when he was at Mobile Monday in Amsterdam. And Mobile Monday in Amsterdam is huge. There are like 500 people there. And he has, the moderator had put this, uh, the, the belt around his chest. So you always saw those tweets coming in. And you knew that when he was going up on stage, you really saw that, whoops, the peak up, uh, coming a tweet with 160 back heart rate. And I think that's a really funny thing because uh, what we see here is that we are not limited with the browser on the mobile to just this device. We are not limited to only have a browser or only have an XHR or some AJAX or some uh, JSON uh, communication, but we can communicate out into the real world. Of course, this device had to be jailbroken because, you know, the Bluetooth stack on the iPhone is not actually allowing other connections. But uh, I just want to, that's exactly the, the example I want to show, which is like hacking and thinking out of the box. There's another thing. I just saw this picture yesterday from uh, Google Developer Day in Munich. Uh, where they're, I don't know what they've been hacking, but it looks like some uh, sound uh, thing, and they have an Android uh, running on the tablet, I guess. And another thing that all my friends and colleagues are really excited about now, and they hope to get it for Christmas, is this AR drone. I don't know if you know that. It's a, actually an iPhone-controlled helicopter. So you have this iPhone, and if you go like this, it just goes in, uh, faster, and if you just uh, go back, so it uses all the sensors that you have inside the iPhone, and you can control it with the panels or with some application, which is on the iPhone to go up and down and all that. So what I just tried to say here is that even though we're, we want to use the web, web technology, we are using the web technologies on the phone. We are not limited to just what the browser offers us. And that's exactly... Uh, what I want to conclude with. And maybe you're interested and we go into more detail in the next session where I'm going to talk more about HTML5 apps. If you have questions, it would be great to answer. If not, I understand that you're hungry. <laughs>